So Katerina Fretwell, Katerina Fretwell's ninth, ninth book, We Are Malala in Nana, 2019, was launched in Toronto. Her eighth, Dancing on a Pin in Nana, 2015, was long listed for the Lowther Prize and five of the poems placed runner up in Subterrain's Outside Poetry Contest. Her seventh class acts in Anna 2013 was a noble poetry book in 2013 on Carrie Clare's website blog. She compiled and illustrated intimate passages for the Ontario Poetry Society 2021 and placed honorable mention in George Eliot Clark's Love Lies Bleeding Anthology 2021. She's illustrated all her poetry books, plus three anthologies, which she edited for the League of Canadian Poets. She lives in central and rural Ontario. Go ahead, Katerina. Thank you, Stephanie. I'm honored to read. I, I love uh, Parkland Poets. It, it's just a wonderful, wonderful reading series. So I'm going to read the first and last, plus four middle poems from my manuscript, Holy in My Nature. Weapons of Mass Revelations from the Anthropocene Show at the AGO, Edward Bertinsky, Jennifer Bakewell, and Nicholas Depensier. There we viewers stand sepulchral, gazing not only at a photo show at the AGO, but also a cathedral of sarcophagi. There, struck silent, before each mural or film still, digitally stitched from hundreds of views into unflinching mirrors of human impact, planet-wide in record time. We solemnize death, detailed in rhino horns, gouged earth, steaming rivers, toxic paling, smog trails, barren bluffs. And we wonder at the daredevil risk of injury, slapping lenses onto choppers and diving bells, trains and planes, to peer inside mountains, sea floors, sinkholes that swallow family homes, oil refinery islands, drones increasing their reach. The trio presents this final frontier, eroding and exploding, frying and dying, as we elbow space, poke soil, dam rivers, shoot for fun, eat all we see, grow our garbage, not to freeze us in guilt, but to inspire us into active hope while there are still trees to breathe, soil to till, water to sustain life. Tourist destination from an imagined corporate brochure. Come, come, be the first to visit this never before one of a kind must see site a Pacific island twice the size of Texas. We provide scoops to build plastic castles and tons of bottles for salty water. Unimpeded sun, rain, even stars baptize you. No roof or steeple intercepts your viewing pleasure. You might find the surface a tad bumpy. There is no sand to be had, but you haven't lived until you strolled on flooring that rose like a quake aftershock. The shape of this pilgrimage mutates with every wave, current, or riptide. Want to dine and recline? Sorry, we lack beds, lamps, stove, sofa, anything you plug in, plop into, canoodle in, or worship. Welcome to Plastic City, perpetual, as purgatory. Creep. The stalker copies itself unseen in grayed cinder blocks, housing meagerly paid undervalued care staff and defenseless dehydrated residents. The stalker's lipid spiked red surface preys on the world's wizened receptors, smirks along IV poles, metal bedpans, bland mashed up food offerings and faucet and flusher. The stalker hovers twisting time, 
patient as rain drooling down the pane, smug over the ambuscaded hosts, such communion, the interlopers, a hellfire wafer, this body, this blood, the words a wildfire billowing faster than bellowing headlines. But grace exists in these receptive times, birthing heroes, braving harms, cocky promenade to secure our safety and basics. Sometimes the stalker is thwarted and age defies its demographic in a comeuppance against COVID. Feet first. This is from Tim Robertson's poetry prompt from Conspiracy of Three in North Bay. With one second longer on earth than heart, feet, are you flinching to run like hell? Not into fire and brimstone hell. That hell's here on earth, a forever flame. But think, even Usain Bolt and Roger Bannister couldn't foot race out of sight in one second. Think of those feet floating in an NDE, near death and reluctant to return from the white lit tunnel and memoir movie. Foot sore and blistered feet, you haul a heavy load, bones, blood, brain and organs. Heart and spirit, thank you for footing the bill. Or does heart heft the cost? You are all of a piece and for genuine peace into the crematorium you go, feet first. Solitude, what a commentary on her civilization when being alone is suspect and moral Lindbergh's gift from the sea. The sand crab trails delicately silent are effaced by the next wave each wispy line spools a love note, tracing my thoughts out of self, free of barnacled ego. The elements commingle in conversation. Their language subdues my sapien squawk that drowns out nearby bird song. Still, I'm enfolded in a sand crab calm, accounted for in this fleeting moment. And finally, honorable harvest. Never take the first plant you find as it might be the last. And you want that first one to speak well of you to others of her kind. Robin Wall Kimmerer's braiding sweetgrass. How do I escape the system of dominion over the non-human? And heart know they feed, cure, and house all, teaching reciprocity. Potawatomi botanist, Kimmerer, savers, land and life forms as gifts from Mother Earth. I trek to a hillside, flush with plump green leaves, waving to me as trillium trumpet leak season. The first two leaks resist replying no to the permission I seek. Only three per patch harvested. These thick stem big bulbs mellow, my seafood and veggie medleys, and their leaves pepper my salads. I'm grateful for this bounty, and mother my haven, mindful of Ironwood's life pulse, chanting, save this tree, this forest, this planet. But it's all in the respect, thinking leeks, pines, and toads, as he or she, not as it, takes time, time to soften my footsteps, inspired into active hope, while there are still trees to breathe, soil to till, water to sustain. Thank you.